This monument in Moscow looks like a shooting rocket. It marks a glorious stage in the technological development of the former Soviet Union. In 1957, the first satellite in human history was launched. In 1961, the first manned rocket carrying Yuri Gagarin was launched. In 1986, the Mir space station began operating for 15 years, the longest time for human beings to stay in space. Aerospace technology reflects a nation's strength Though once on top of the world, Russia has vanished from international aerospace development over the last decade. The Russian government plans to diversify its economy by developing its technology industry. Can this enable Russia's economy to soar again? It's 11 a.m. in the headquarters of Yandex, the Russian internet search engine company, and not all employees have shown up for work yet. People work flexi-time here, and they can also enjoy various facilities or play some games during their breaks. Yandex is the largest internet search engine company in Russia, with over 20 million visitors to its website every day. It enjoys a 65% market share way ahead of its competitor Google. Arkady, the founder of Yandex, developed a computer program in 1990 to assist researchers to look for information on the university network. This evolved into his current business. Initially, our products were targeted to other scientists. We, we helped research to other researchers. But then when we launched our demo site in 1997, unexpectedly we realized that people, normal people are using this site just for their daily, uh, daily uh, needs. Since its opening in 1997, Yandex has been recording a double-digit growth every year. Even when the economic recession hit the nation in 2009, it still achieved a 14% growth. Innovation in our area, in area of search, comes from professors and scientists who are actually the Soviet and Russian scientists in this area. Uh, a lot of machine learning algorithms are Russian, developed by Russian scientists. Arkady believes that a search engine needs to constantly renew its software and invent new machine intelligence to stay competitive in this online information age. Software talents are equally important and they should be given ample horizon to exercise their creativity. According to Arkady, Russia's software design has always enjoyed a global reputation. Its talents have also been headhunted by international software companies. Yet other scientific disciplines have not been as significant in the last decade. Mathematics and software doesn't require anything but your own head and, uh, and it doesn't require a lot of um, investment. It's just investment in people, in education, and we have a very strong culture of that. And it, it still survived, it, it, it exists. Academic institutions in Moscow and St. Petersburg have long been the basis of Russia's scientific development. Their cutting-edge technology in basic and applied research used to be recognized internationally. However, the shortage of research funding in the 80s and 90s inhibited the nation's scientific research and development. The Russian National Aluminium and Magnesium Institute, VARMI, in St. Petersburg, has invented a number of world-leading technologies in metal refining and application. However, it too suffered from capital shortage at one point. But since its acquisition by Rusal in 2004, it's been operating in a stable environment. We have acquired and joined several individual institutes. We have put together a group of young, good and very professional specialists now. We have created a think tank, and this is one of our competitive advantages. Rusal allocates some 100 million US dollars a year for R&D. Very few enterprises in Russia are doing that, nor have they successfully turned their findings into viable businesses. I believe we are now facing the new transition of the environment and provide a lot of stimulus you know, for the company who involved in the development of a new product. I believe that uh, in five, seven years, 
Russia could uh, have half of its export based on manufacturing in a product and, uh, and technology. Given the Russian strengths that we believe we uh, have, uh, the good education system, uh, good traditions uh, in science uh, uh, and uh, applied research, uh, all that can uh, have positive influence on our future if we will be able to promote uh, innovations uh, and investments. In recent years, Russia has been developing the technology industry to solve the problem of over-reliance on resource export. In 2009, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev set out some key directions for development. In particular, we focus on energy efficiency, on nuclear energy, on uh, IT, telecommunications, space technologies, uh, and medical technologies, including pharmaceuticals and medical uh, equipment. Uh, so we put emphasis on those fields where uh, we can achieve real results uh, in uh, uh, medium-term uh, perspective um, uh, already. Vladislav's staff have just moved into the new plant in St. Petersburg. They're busy preparing for the plant opening at year-end. Upon graduating from Optio Electronics in St. Petersburg, Vladislav worked in foreign companies developing LED lighting systems. Later, he developed the nanotechnology to enhance the efficiency of LED lighting. He decided to set up his own company to produce his invention. We organized our own companies, first in Finland, then we established a factory in Germany. But of course, St. Petersburg is our home city. We always remembered about it. So as soon as there appeared a possibility to move with our factory here, like to, I was going to say not to move, but to expand our business by making a new factory here. In 2009, Vladislav successfully applied for a capital injection from the Russian Corporation of Nanotechnologies, Rusnano. This enabled him to produce his technology and expand his business in Russia. It opened for us Russian market, which is very important for our company. It's a big market and you know now I would say it's one of the most advanced markets. In 2007, the Russian government injected a capital of 130 billion rubles, that's 4.3 billion US dollars, to set up the Russian Corporation of Nanotechnologies, or Rusnano. Its mission was to run a venture fund and accept funding applications from newly developed nanotechnology projects from across the world. Successful applicants have to set up their companies and produce their products in Russia. The Russian government was hoping to use direct investment to attract worldwide inventions to Russia so as to establish a sizable nanotechnology industry in the nation. We came to this stage a bit later, so we have to move quicker. So this is why we have to invite the participation of the government. And it was done because our private companies were not so much eager to invest into this field and to invest quickly and to invest considerable amount of money. So we, we could not achieve that. This is why the government decided that uh, we must help our private business, we must invest money. Rosnana's process involves assessing the technology, the merchandising plan and profit outlook of each application. It will inject at most half of the capital needed and then assist the applicant in finding private investors to come up with the balance. As of the end of 2009, Rosnano had approved 61 out of 600 applications and invested more than 3 billion US dollars. Besides providing capital, the group also offers an environment for applicants to start their businesses in Russia. Over the past two decades, Russia has constantly renewed its laws and systems to meet the developmental needs of the nation. However, the outdated systems and laws left by the communist regime could not be replaced overnight. An example is the restriction on import of high-tech production equipment, which directly affects the development of the technology industry. The systems were also bureaucratic, complicated and inefficient. So when Rosnano was set up, the government also formulated regulations to allow companies approved for capital injection to be exempted from these outdated laws. As a state institution supported by the government, we are in a very good position to protect our partners from all those negative phenomena. Still, because of a lot of inheritance from Soviet time, a lot of rules and laws should be changed by the government now very logically and very, I would say, firmly changes these laws one by one and it's now exactly a good time, I think, to invest. 
Vladislav's LED lighting system was one of the projects that had been approved for Riznano funding. The company has more than 100 employees and 600 more will be needed when the plant begins production. From labor costs in Petersburg is better than like in Germany, it's cheaper, but simultaneously it's very well developed, scientifically developed city and we don't have any problem to find a really good, well-trained personnel here, which we need good engineers. When we talk about developing electrical-driven means of transportation, we have the need to produce a battery which could supply electricity for a long time. The industry has been longing to see such an invention. Alexander's Batteries for Electricity Driven Vehicles project is also one of the successful applicants. It uses nanotechnology to increase the power and capacity of batteries for electricity driven buses and large vehicles. The project is cooperating with a Chinese enterprise and is exporting its products to China. 80% of the production cost goes to raw materials. That's why it doesn't make a big difference whether the production plant is located in China or Russia. There is mutual interest for both parties. China can have access to new markets in Russia, while we have guaranteed sales outlets in China. Rosnano believes that the nanotechnology industry has a promising future. It can also enhance the efficiency of other research and production technologies, thus promoting the modernization of other Russian industries. That nanotechnologies is an appropriate chain. If you take it, you can and pull it, you are moving the whole chain of innovations. And this is important. And in those terms, nanotechnologies are probably a very convenient instrument for developing economy as a whole. The development of nanotechnology is just one aspect of the economic modernization of Russia. Other areas are also experiencing chains of changes.